Hey everybody, you're watching Ready Set Drone and today we're gonna try out the iPhone X with the DJI Go 4 app, so stay tuned. Ha, that was funny. So a uh, couple of comments about the new iPhone X or iPhone 10, depending on what you wanna call it. Um, this isn't a review, but I just wanted to try it out with the DJI Go 4 app and see how it works. I'm gonna fly my Mavic today uh, with it uh, using the DJI Go 4 app. I've flown it once before briefly, um, but I wasn't really paying attention to how the phone was performing in terms of running the app and being able to switch things. The other thing I'm super excited about is the ability to screen record now with iOS 11. So this is an iPhone 10, and it is uh, running iOS 11 1.1. 1 .1. 11.1.1, so 2.1s after the 11, um, which does give you the ability to screen record not only on this phone, but on some of the earlier versions. I upgraded from an, from an iPhone 6, not even an iPhone 6S, but an iPhone 6, and uh, I really like it. A couple things I really like about this phone. First of all, the face ID works really, really well. Um, it works with glasses on, it works at night, uh, it, it works in the dark. It pretty much works every time I've used it. There have been a couple times it hasn't worked, but I think I've actually had the phone too close to my face. So that's been really cool, and it's like the phone's not even locked. You pull it out, you look at it, and it comes on, and you're able to maneuver things. Second of all, the fact that there's no home button, as you may know, changes the way you navigate on it quite a bit, and so you really do have a little bit of a learning curve, but it took me about a day before I figured everything out, and now I'm pretty used to how you close apps and change between apps and bring Siri up and all that sort of thing. So if you already know iOS, then you probably won't have any trouble. Even if you don't iOS, you won't have any trouble. Just practice a little bit. So that's, that's a good thing. It isn't a big learning curve, just a slight one, but there is a bit of a learning curve. And then finally, uh, this thing is just wicked fast compared to my iPhone 6, which um, quite honestly had been dropped and screen had been replaced and had a lot of issues. Uh, first of all, having a brand new phone is nice, but having one that runs as fast is awesome. So not, uh, again, not reviewing this thing, just really I uh, think it's pretty cool and wanted to try it with the DJI Go 4 app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the screen recording. I'm going to launch DJI Go 4, take it for a flight and just use some of the features and see if there's any hiccups or any problems with it. So let's do that. So just like any other phone that you use with the Mavic, you do have to take the case off pretty much in order to fit it into the controller here, which is a little bit of a pain, but you know, not a huge deal. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. I'm gonna go ahead and move my uh, Mavic over to where I can set a home point out from under this cover above me. So hold on a sec. Okay, so you know, it's a usual deal. You gotta kind of shimmy it in here, get it connected to the lightning cable or a USB cable, depending on what you're using. But when you have the phone in the DJI Go, um, or in the DJI remote control, the face camera actually won't work. And the reason is because the camera, the facing, uh, forward facing camera is right here underneath this little uh, bumper. And so you're not gonna be able to activate this with face recognition when it's in the, in the slot like this. Now, uh, if it was held a different way, or if you just plugged it in and had it sitting to the side, it would work, but it won't work like this. So you're basically gonna have to use, um, Face ID is gonna fail. I'm gonna have to use my, um, my uh, passcode, and it works with the passcode just fine. And now I'm gonna start my screen recording. All right, so screen recording's going. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring up, uh, DJI Go 4. Let's go ahead and roll some video on the um, on the drone and get it in the air. And so I'm just going to uh, poke around on the screen a little bit while the drone's in the air and just see how it behaves, like how the touching the button does with different things on the screen. Um, I will say the screen is 
fairly easy to see. It's it's bright out here today, and the uh, sun sunlight is not detracting me from being able to see the screen. I've got my brightness all the way up though, so that's probably part of the reason. I'm just going to fly forward a little bit over this field, and then I'm going to uh, hit um, tripod mode and hit OK, and just practice in tripod mode a little bit. You can see it says tripod on the screen. Just uh, gonna rotate, everything's slower in tripod mode. Jump out of tripod mode, exit, go up here, kind of click through a couple of things here. And everything as I touch it is uh, happening very, very quickly and very responsibly. Um, it is way more responsive than my old iPhone 6 was in terms of when I push something. Uh, sometimes with the iPhone 6 I would have to push it twice uh, or it would just take a second for it to happen. Uh, this is all happening really quickly as I touch each space to focus, tap to focus and, and uh, expose properly. Um, let's see what else we've got. And switch between my uh, camera modes here. Got my photo versus video. My um, my sort of uh, settings for photo and video. Slide that over. Portrait versus landscape. What does this do? Huh. I didn't realize you could do a screen. Uh, didn't realize you could do a screen uh, uh, brightness on this within the DJI Go 4 app. That's pretty cool. So we'll just fly around just a little bit. This is where I'm sitting, right over in these bleachers. There I am, getting the little warning that says there's an obstacle in front of me. Bring the Mavic through this little slot here. And land it. So flying the DJI Mavic using DJI Go 4 and the iPhone 10 seems to work pretty well. I will say there are still some issues with being able to get to the screen in order to do certain things on it because of these bumpers here that are um, holding the phone in place. That was a problem before too though because you couldn't really get to the home button very easily uh, when you had it in the bumpers. Uh, there is the issue with no face ID because the bumpers are covering up the camera. But that was sort of an issue before again uh, as well. The design on the phone has not changed that much. It's still pretty much the same form factor. Uh, but as far as running the, the program, running um, DJI Go 4, it runs great, uh, at least from what I can tell. Very responsive. Uh, everything I touched instantly responded and was very easy to find things. They've gotten better and better with that app all the time. And running it in iOS 11 on an iPhone 10 seems to work pretty well. So, wish I had more uh, scoop for you in this video, but if you are thinking about getting an iPhone 10 or a DJI Mavic or anything else that runs DJI Go 4, uh, it'll work uh, from what I can tell. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos about the DJI uh, Mavic, the Spark, the Phantom, and lots of other drones, please hit subscribe. We'll see you next time on Ready, Set, Drone.